Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat. I am just working on some more um, ephemera and stuff. I finished this little book that we did the other day together. I just added a little like a rosette. I made a bunch of these while I was sick and these are super simple. I'm sure most of you have probably seen these, but if you haven't, all I did is take like a piece of, um, you know, seam binding or, you know, whatever, any kind of lace, ribbon, whatever, and you just do a running stitch up one side and then pull it and it gathers together to kind of make like a little rosette and it, um, the the wider the ribbon or lace or whatever the bigger the flower is going to be around so like this purple was just a little thin piece of ribbon that I did that with and then I added stuff like little snippets of lace or buttons or you know those type of things there's like a tiny button and then I just did some fuzz in a circle and, you know, so just, just to give a little something on the front of that, but you don't have to do that at all. You could leave it um, plain and then it will slip in and out of a pocket easier. But I just added a Tim Holtz and um, a couple of other little decorations here and there, but for the most part, it's the same as it was the other day when we did it. And I found out because a lady commented, her name is uh, Jeannie Bush. She's the one that, um, gave it to Gail Augustinelli in the first place. So this is her idea. So thank you so much, Jeannie. And that was awesome that you commented and said, you know, that you were happy that um, I just made it in a different way. So that's the awesome part about this community is we were all kind of sharing our ideas and passing them around and stuff. But Jeannie's the one that um, came up with this idea of doing it on that, that flash card, which I didn't have. So that's why I did it on the manila folder. So that one's done. And then I got some uh, printables from uh, Nick the Booksmith and this was one of the envelopes in there and it just was screaming out to be made into a pad of paper <laughs> to tuck somewhere. It just, I don't know, I just saw that and I felt like that's what that wanted to be. So that's what it is. I just s stitched it right in, right across there. And then um, I took an envelope. I thought I would go ahead and turn on the camera to do this part because I've had some people ask me how I do my loaded envelopes. And so the, if this is um, not new information to you or whatever, you can just kind of craft along and do whatever you're working on. If you don't know how to do this, I'm going to show you how I did this particular one. Um, this is the envelope, and I just cut this part open, and I sealed the envelope. And this is the piece that I cut off. It was right down here. But what I did first was um, I turned it inside out. And, but you could cut it this way too. It doesn't matter. You don't have to turn it inside out for this part. Just um, turn it inside out. Cut it where you want it. I did. I cut off about, that's like uh, two and three quarters inches off the bottom of the envelope. Um, sealed it all up. So now this is like a pocket here. And then this is where I cut it off. That's just the piece I cut off. And then this envelope has that um, secret, whatever that they call that, so you can't see through them, um, on the inside. And so I just turned this piece inside out, just turned it right inside out and glued it together inside out. And I left that bottom piece with the um, avocado dyed side out. So you can see the avocado dye on both sides but I just kind of liked this print. And look at the difference between these two. They're the same kind of envelope, but this one's a little bit lighter than this one. But anyway, that's how I did it. I just turned this portion inside out and left this right side out. So I'll put that pocket down there like that. And you don't have to uh, cut it off to make the pocket. If you're going to leave it, like if I was going to leave it this, just the avocado dyed, I would seal it just cut a thin layer off of here and a thin layer off of here and then you can just fold this up and it'll make a pocket the same way but because I wanted to turn this portion of the envelope inside out like that I just went ahead and cut it off so then all I'm going to do is glue this right down here on the bottom just on these sides and then I'll have a pocket behind and I'll have a pocket right there so that'll give me two pockets and the same thing when you fold it up that you just don't have to add the glue down at the bottom, but there's there's no difference in how it will turn out, <coughs> if that makes sense. I hope it did. 
Um, I really like this design too, so I'm not going to cover this a whole bunch. Uh, I, uh, I did cut a piece that I'm going to put right here. I've made a tag, and this is just a picture that I got off of Pinterest that looked like this. I just cut her out and inked her a little bit. And this is Nick the Booksmith's tag, um, some of her paper from, it's called My Lady's Desk Accessory Kit on her um, Etsy site. And um, so I just tore a piece off and put it right there. And then I had some other um, scrap of paper that I was using in this kit. You know, this when I made this the other day. It's the same pad of paper. And then I also made a large tag that will fit right in back there. And that's out of that pad of paper that I had the other day. So I'm just going to keep working on that. So I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask. It's uh, no problem at all. So... Um, that's all I do when I make my loaded pockets and then I either stitch them up or just glue them up or uh, whatever I decide to do and you can do it however you want to do it you don't have to use you don't have to sew if you don't have a sewing machine or something and I'm also using um, Tracy Fox's tags and toppers I believe is what she called this one and some of them like this one um, printed at the edge of the paper so it's like a skinnier tag but I kind of liked it and um, this one's a little bit wider and shorter. It just, you, you can do them however you want. You can make them in all different sizes. I even printed them tiny, like the one I put in here, this one. So, yeah, you can, um, you know, print them any way you want, with or without toppers. However. <coughs> okay, so, that said, I'm going to keep working on this. I think... I don't want to cover this a whole bunch, but I kind of do want a little bit of something back there just to give it some interest. <clears throat> but I really like the way that pattern came out. It kind of had an old-fashioned look, I felt like. <clears throat> Denise sent me those um, avocado dyed. She does such great avocado dyeing. And so that's where I got that. And she also sent me these napkins. I think I'm going to use one of those to put back on there. I think that'll look pretty because you'll be able to still kind of see that pattern through it. <clears throat> I need a piece of tape. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. I'm slowly but surely continuing to feel a little bit better. Just the stinking cough. I wish it would go away. It's driving me crazy. can't tell if there's another one on there. Sure enough, sometimes it's hard to tell. <clears throat> so I'm just going to use that one little part, so I'm not going to worry about Well, it'll all come off. So. And I think I'm going to do the cheating way and do it with a glue stick, because it's light enough that I don't think that's going to be a problem holding that on there. But if you want to decoupage it, you know, definitely do that. I'm just impatient. I don't feel like waiting for it to dry. <laughs> I kind of like to using the glue stick because I've said it before, it kind of keeps the texture of the napkin, which I like. Um, sometimes when you decoupage it, it loses that feel of the napkin which you know is fine I just I kind of like it yeah I think that'll be pretty I just didn't really want the words on it I just wanted the roses <clears throat> thank you Denise for those because those are great I don't have any with like roses or anything on them, so those are awesome. You just have to make sure you get all the edges and stuff, especially with the glue stick. let that dry. I'm going to work on this bottom portion. I did cut a piece for this. What did I do with it? 
And this is again from Nick the Booksmith's My Lady's Accessories. If you're interested in that, it's a pretty, it's just pretty papers and kind of that Victorian look. I love that. <clears throat> And I think you're supposed to use these kind of like postcards because that's about the size that they are when they print. But I'm using them more like, you know, just paper. And I think I might make it a pocket as well. I just like to have lots of um, little tucky type spots when I'm making these. So I'm just going to glue on three sides. <clears throat> much glare on that glass. I like to have that because it's good for glue and inking it keeps it off of my mat. I make a big enough mess without <laughs> like messing up my whole mat there. And then I have some pretty lace I'm going to put on there. Alright, so I, Denise sent me this as well, and that looks gorgeous along there, so I think that's what I'm going to put there. But I think I'm going to stitch it first onto the envelope itself. <coughs> because otherwise, um, I'm not going to be able to do that once I get that lace on there. So I'm going to stitch that, and I'll be right back. Hi, everybody. I'm back. I had a few technical difficulties, but I think I got them fixed. <laughs> not that you should be surprised by that, but me sewing is really not a great plan. <laughs> All right, let me just get this up. Alright, so I've stitched all the way around there, and then I'm just going to add some glue down here, and I just added another little layer there. And I was going to just sew that on, but those pearls, that's what I was having. It just wasn't going to work, so I'm sure there's a way. I just don't, don't know it, so I'm just going to glue it on. Alright, so now I have the top part of the envelope, the bottom part of the envelope. There's a um, pocket here, pocket there, pocket right here. So I'm going to let this dry all the way and then I'll keep, you know, doing some other stuff. <coughs> so I have this big tag and I wanted to do something to that. So let's see, I like this one. I think I'm going to put some of this lace in that. Just to go ahead and finish that off. <clears throat> All right, and then I save those because that's kind of what I put down here was just some little snippets of fabric and lace so that tag's all ready to go and it's just plain on the back you can see the stitching and so I'm going to do something with this big one and I kind of want to use another one of those pictures of those ladies because they look kind of cool <clears throat> let's see what could I use with that I'm not sure if I want to cut it or I mean I'm going to have to cut it a little bit because it's too big I think I'm just going to cut around the border instead of cutting her out entirely. <clears throat> and again, I just got these off of Pinterest. Just They're just old, you know, 18, 1900s photos. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry, 
Sorry, I keep coughing in your ear. <clears throat> I want to punch a hole in this one too. And again, this is Tracy Fox's Tags and Toppers. Just goes really well with this, all of this stuff. And put a little of these on there. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm kind of skipping all over today. just a little because you can see where the hole punch was. <clears throat> Those are really pretty. Those go great with all of this. So that one's done. I'm not sure what I'm going to put in the top of that so I'm not going to worry about it right this minute. else on there. I'm not sure what. <coughs> hmm. These are pretty. Denise sent me these too. These would look really kind of cool on there. At least one of them. And I'm assuming they're off of a like a old table runner or a tablecloth or one of those dresser cloths, whatever they're called, cover. They kind of did need two, huh? the two of them together better. This way I need to cut off these extra little stick out parts. Those are sewing scissors I need to put them back by the <coughs> sewing machine. <laughs> So that's old vintage, um, like doily type things. Let me ink this. of this I just put um, manila folder <clears throat> and glue of course has to stick to it so this is a big nice journaling spot so this will be kind of a nice set once it's all finished Thank you to Allie, my friend, the coffee crafter, because she uses one of these, and that is a great idea. It just helps keep your board so much cleaner. <coughs> and I never thought of that. <clears throat> I just always wiped it off, but, you know, sometimes that's a pain. It's a lot easier just to take this and wash it. <clears throat> so I like that, but I still feel like I need something else. Yeah, I could stitch some of this down the side and stitch those on at the same time, like. It's 
kind of like something like that and then put those on top so you can see that color. Something like that. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that so I'll be right back. Okay, hi, I'm back. I uh, changed it up a little bit. When I was pulling pieces out of that uh, Sorry Silk, it kind of spun and um, reminded me of like a rosette. So I just kind of stitched it down like that and I just ended up using one of those. And then I'm just going to tuck her kind of like this. So, you know, little things that happen while you're um, crafting, just go with them sometimes because sometimes they turn out kind of cool. So, um, yeah, I just thought it kind of looks like a rosette a little bit on there. So, anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and glue her picture down. So that one was pretty easy to do. Sometimes it just comes together for whatever reason. Other times it's like pulling teeth. <coughs> just tuck her under there. I like how there's already that clock up there and the carriage down below. I'm going to put a piece of that same sorry silk in the tops of these. <clears throat> this is from Denise. It's avocado dyed, I believe, or it might be the cotton candy that she gets, but it looks avocado dyed to me. She will have to comment on that. I'm pretty sure it's avocado dyed, but you just have to be super careful when you're ripping it because it um, is not like a lot of fabric that will just rip straight it kind of just goes wherever it wants to it's just super fragile just keep a good hang on it and don't um, just let it go So yeah, I was just pulling some of the extra strings off and it all wound up, you know, like it does. And I thought, hey, that would look kind of cool on there. So I'm just going to snip these because I don't want it to pull further. Otherwise, there's not going to be much left. <laughs> okay. So this one will go on the little one. And I probably have enough for both of them here. That's one thing when you're putting these tags, toppers on, you don't need a whole bunch on it. that one and then I'll put this on this one ah that was good let's try that again I like this avocado dyed with a little bit of brown. It, it's really pretty because it's such a dusty uh, rose kind of a color. It's not like a normal pinky pink. Let's see, gets rid of some of that. Strings everywhere. Nope, they're still with me. They need to be quite that long. Alright, let's see how our envelope is doing. It should be pretty good by now. So this one will go in here. So these envelopes are really easy to make. And I just realized because of the stitching, it's not going to fit anymore. Oh my goodness. I did a li just little too. I'm just going to have to take a little edge off of that to make it fit right. 
See, that's how this all works. And I think this will fit right down in here. I'm going to put it this way. And then these. Some days. She can be peeking out. And I need to move this so it's not stuck in the tape. Get rid of those strings. I'm going to see if I can cut just a sliver off of this. That's such a bummer. <laughs> uh, to try to do it without cutting anything else is the problem. I'll have to take it off of both sides so that they're even. It figures. Just a little, but I don't think that's that big of a deal. <coughs> Let me see if it fits, and then I'll fix those sides and stuff. It's very typical of me when I'm doing these things. There we go. Yeah, that's going to fit. So I can take this back out. I can fix my corners. They're pretty good, but there's just a little off from changing it. And then I gotta ink it again. Best laid plans, right? I even cut this one quite a bit smaller because I knew I tend to do that. But it wasn't small enough. surgery there. Alright, there we go. So like that, and then this will go with it. And Thinking in here, I can ink some of these. These are this is from Nick the Booksmith. <clears throat> Just some ephemera. I think this was a freebie that she gave out. She was doing like Titanic type something. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, put those in there. And you could, you know, take that uh, envelope out and use it somewhere else or glue it down somewhere else or however. And that says April 1910, I think it is. I have this too that I thought would be kind of cool on something. And this is just from a paper pad that I had with roses and stuff on it. I 
There's also a button card that I think that I will um, put some buttons on. Everybody's still coughing around here. Go in there. <clears throat> and one of these tea cards from Tracy Fox. I just think it's fun to load these up because then you can use all this um, ephemera somewhere else, you know, in your journal, or you know, you can keep it in the pockets too. But it's kind of fun to put all kinds of goodies in there, and then you can use them, you know, other places for puck spots or whatever that you want. Ladies. So that's what I've got done so far, and like I said, I think I'm going to do this button card to go in here as well. <coughs> I'm going to stitch on some buttons, but I'll do that probably tonight while I sit and watch TV. So I will um, talk to you guys later, and I think what I'll do is send along one of those too. <coughs> so yeah, it'll just be a whole little ephemera kit, and I'll show it before it's all done, and I may come on and do another piece but that's that's the one for today the loaded envelope so I just thought I would come on and show that I thought that was kind of fun to turn the envelope inside out so that you can see all that um, cool design on the inside it looks neat with this vintage look so anyways I will talk to y'all later have a great weekend bye bye now